Hello everyone, this is Fran from CoolProject.es producing this video for the Spherical blob. Welcome to this new tutorial in which we are going to calculate the infiltration and ventilation thermal load for our cold room. So let's start. First we have here the infiltration load due to the daily traffic in the room. Because of door opening, there will be some air renewal and since the outdoor air is warmer and more humid than the indoor air, we'll have to counter some sensible and latent heat entering the cold room. Here is the equation we must use for the infiltration thermal load. We have to use some parameters. We can estimate daily infiltration air changes using this formula which depends on the volume of the room. This one is the formula we have to use. The result is 11.74, but imagine our room is about 1000 cubic meters, then the daily air changes are about 3. That is to say, the more room volume, the less air change when opening the doors. Makes sense, doesn't it? Other parameters we have to consider are specific enthalpy and volume of the indoor and outdoor air. Specific enthalpy is the energy, sensible and latent energy, intrinsic to the air in joules per kilogram of dry air. The specific volume is the opposite of density, is cubic meters per kilogram of dry air. We can check these characteristic values in a psychrometric chart for most air. Here is the chart with the position of the outdoor and indoor points. As we can see here, the indoor temperature is 0 degrees and relative humidity is 85%. This is the indoor point. And we have here the outdoor point with that drivable temperature of 25 degrees and relative humidity about 50%. For each point we have drivable temperature, relative humidity, enthalpy, for the indoor point is 8,069 joules per kilogram and for the outdoor point is 50,333 joules per kilogram. We can see that the specific enthalpy or energy of the outdoor air is higher than the one of the indoor air. Because of that we have to counter a thermal load when the air infiltration happens. We also can see that the specific volume is higher for the outdoor point. I don't know if you are familiarized with this psychrometric chart and the reading of air variables. If you all are interested, we can do another tutorial to delve into psychrometric analysis. Well, replacing the values of the parameters in the equation, we obtain 532 watts at the infiltration thermal load for this project. We can see here the result. If we try to understand this equation, we can see that we have at the end energy divided by time, resulting power measured in watts. These 24 and 3600 factors are to make shift from the time in days to seconds. Above we have volume and below we have a specific volume, so cubic meters divided by cubic meters per kilogram of dry air, we have mass in kilogram of dry air. And mass multiplied by a specific enthalpy results in energy in joules. Finally, joules divided by seconds gives rise to power in watts, so in relation to the units, the equation makes sense. We are going to see now the ventilation thermal load. The concept is similar to the infiltration load. The equation is the same as you can see here. The ventilation load is for some products which need some air changes to remove respiration and metabolic vapors or fumes. For example, meat and fish need about 2 to 4 air changes per day. Fruits and vegetables need more, about 6 to 12. 
and same products like onion or garlic requires more than 20 changes per day usually. It is because these products generate a lot of sulfur vapors we have to remove to keep clean the cold room atmosphere. In this case, for chicken fillets, we need around two changes per day. Since we need two air changes and due to infiltration we have 11.7, then ventilating isn't necessary for our walker room. The normal traffic air infiltration is enough. If it's good and enough, we should install a ventilation system and take into account this additional thermal load. Well guys, that was all about this infiltration and ventilation load. I hope you liked the video and like always I invite you to comment and ask anything you want. I'll be glad to answer you every question. In the next video we are learning how to estimate the thermal load due to the product cooling. See you then, bye!